So my name's Second Lieutenant Bourgeois. I'm a preventive medicine officer and I've been part of the COVID response management since April of last year. Um, today you are going to be working with Captain Dendy as well if you have any questions for a PA. And my boss, you may have seen around, tall guy, Lieutenant Colonel Long, has an eye patch, kind of looks like Nick Fury. So one of the things I want to talk about here on this slide in the introduction is we've all seen this picture of a COVID virus, right? When we start talking about the spike protein today, what we're talking about is one of these little red spikes that you see right here. Nothing inside the virus, only this little piece of protein right here on the outside of the virus. So why are you here today? You're here to receive an informational brief because you are being offered the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine on a voluntary basis. This vaccine has been authorized via emergency use authorization to help uh, prevent the spread of COVID-19. So before I get too deep into this, has anyone here had a dose of or scheduled to get a dose of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine outside of this building? Awesome. So again, I, I want to reiterate, this is being offered to you on a voluntary basis. There is no penalty, there is no adverse effects if you would not like to receive this vaccine at this time. There are plenty of reasons where you might not want it. Some of them are a contraindication, others are because you're not confident in where the research is, and we're going to talk about that. But the reason I'm going to give you this brief is I want you to have enough knowledge to make the best decision for yourself at the end. So the Moderna COVID vaccine is one of two that is currently out in the market or out for use right now via emergency use authorization. <clears throat> one is Moderna, one is Pfizer. Both have been shown to be 95% effective at protecting you from getting COVID as long as you complete the two series dose. So again, both are a two series dose. And with Moderna, you have to wait a minimum of 28 days between doses. Now this, Vaccine doesn't contain any live virus and it doesn't interact with your DNA in any way. And we're going to talk about that. And after you do get it, you'll still have to follow all the regulations as far as wearing masks and, <clears throat> and you know, washing your hands and maintaining social distancing. So what do vaccines do? So they help prevent disease, but how do they do that, right? Basically what a vaccine particularly this one, is that we give you a little piece of the virus, not the infectious part, but you remember that red spike protein we were showing you on the first slide? Well, we give you a pro an mRNA vax, uh, that actually codes for that little teeny spike protein. Nothing, none of the infectious part of the virus, just that spike protein. And we're gonna get into more about that for a second. And what happens is your body grabs that, looks at it, and starts creating an immunity to it. And if the actual virus gets in you, it'll already have a battle plan to begin fighting the virus for you. So again, this is a messenger RNA. So what does that mean? A messenger RNA is like a blueprint for the cell. And what this blueprint does is it said, here's all the pieces and how you put together that spike protein. Now, there are cells in your body that will grab that mRNA, and they don't put it in the DNA section of the cell. They just use the machinery inside the cell, and they go, okay, and they start building these spike proteins, and they start wearing them, right? They put them all on the surface of the cell. And then you, your immune cells will come and go, hey, that looks like it doesn't belong here. And it'll start to build up immunity via antibodies to help you fight the virus, even though it's not the actual virus. And that's how you get your protection. So you do not get COVID-19 from the vaccine. Again, there is no live virus in this. The mRNA you're getting literally just codes for that little spike protein. And then your body builds up antibodies so that if it ever actually does see the virus, it already knows how to fight it. And it'll help prevent you from getting the disease. Doesn't react with your DNA in any way. And actually, once your cell is done 
printing little copies of that spike protein on, your, on its cell surface, it gets rid of that mRNA. It disappears. Now, if anybody wants to get super science-y, there's a link here. You can come see me afterwards, and I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. And you can see some great animations on how that works. So are they effective? <clears throat> Short answer is yes. Both Moderna and Pfizer have found that after you do both doses and complete the series, it is 95% effective at helping prevent you from getting the COVID-19 disease. Now, how long does it protect you? Well, there's not enough data yet. It hasn't been out long enough for us to see how long your protection will persist and how long it will last. But they're testing every single day and they're gathering data and it's updated all the time. <clears throat> so what are some of the benefits of vaccination? Well, number one is that by giving you something that looks like the virus, for your body to learn to fight the virus, if you do get exposed, it'll protect you. It'll keep you from getting sick. So I know a lot of us are these healthy, hale soldiers, and you know, it's just gonna be a cold to me, but the funny thing about this virus is, we don't know why, but certain people, it has a major long-lasting effect on. And there are triathletes out there that their respiratory system is going to be damaged for the rest of their lives. There are people out there that are having heart conditions that are super, super healthy, all because they had a strange reaction with the virus. So one of the question, one of the important parts about the benefits of a vaccination is you're learning to fight that COVID-19 virus without actually getting the virus. Therefore, you're getting protection without that risk of you being that one person. So more importantly, for those that are healthy and hale, is protecting the people around you. Just because you're strong immune-wise, a lot of people at, in their home have an elderly parent or a grandparent. Uh, maybe you have a family member that's recovering from some sort of cancer therapy. Those people are immunocompromised. You might be fine getting the virus and dealing with it, but exposing them to it could be catastrophic and it could have super horrible effects. So stopping the virus. I mentioned before <clears throat> that getting the protection from the vaccine is just one tool in an arsenal that we need to use to stop the spread of this virus. You need to continue to follow all the rules about wearing your mask, washing your hands regularly, and waiting six feet apart from each other. Once you get your second dose and you know, you're protected, it, it doesn't mean you can start walking into Walmart and going, yeah, I'm good, I, I got vaccinated. We need to use all the tools that we have available to us to stop the spread of this. So we talked about we are making it look like you have the virus in your body so that your body will learn to fight it. Well, in the process of building those antibodies, your body can have a lot of the same symptoms that you would get having the flu, right? You might have some tiredness, you might have a headache, muscle pain, fever, some joint pain and nausea all things you'd experience with a flu because that's the symptoms of your body ramping up and trying to build antibodies. But these effects are mild and short lasting. And the median is two to three days if you do get them. What's important to remember is these are side effects of your body building the antibodies. You are not contagious. You don't have the virus in you. Your family is safe. You're, you know, a lot of people ask questions about pets. Pets are safe because when you have the vaccine, if you get these symptoms, you're really just building those antibodies and that's the process of your body building that natural immunity. Can you have an allergic reaction? Absolutely. It, you can have an allergic reaction to any vaccine. You can have a vaccine, have a second dose of anything, including flu vaccine, and you could have an allergic reaction the first time if you didn't, uh, excuse me, the second time, even if you didn't the first. That's why whenever you get a vaccine, we rescreen you. We ask you the same questions. And then after you get it, we monitor you for a period of time. So we are going to monitor you to 15 to 30 minutes after you, if you decide to get the vaccine today, just to be sure, because there are people here that can help you. So what are some of the long-term COVID-19 vaccine side effects? Well, it hasn't been out long enough. We don't know yet. 
But there's a couple of reporting systems, one of which you should get this sheet. It's called vSafe. It's a mobile app. And if you feel that you're having an adverse reaction, you can report it here, as well as they'll update you if they feel there's something you should be looking for. And I'm going to go back a couple of slides real quick. These mild side effects that we talked about that are like a normal flu, these can be controlled with over-the-counter medications, whatever you would normally take if you had a flu-like symptom. We don't expect you to report this. If they start to get more than your average flu, you can start by reporting to your primary care physician, or if you're on orders or at a, uh, on a drill, you could just report to sick call. This is not something that we're talking about when we say report. If you felt it was much further than that and it was emergency, obviously go to urgent care. So contraindications and precautions. This is a lot of fancy words to say, if you have any of these things, we recommend that you do not get the vaccine today. So are you actively sick? Are you pregnant or planning to become pregnant in the next 90 days? Are you currently nursing? Are you immunocompromised due to medication or a condition? And what we mean by that is if you've been taking a round of steroids prescribed, that can reduce your immune response. A previous reaction to a vaccine or injectable medication. Are, have you been COVID-19 positive in the last 30 days? Have you had surgery in the last or coming 45 days? Currently using any narcotics, we're not the DEA. What we're talking about is if, are you on long-term pain management where they've given you a prescribed narcotic? We just want to know about it. And I'm sure a lot of people in here do not fall into the last one under the age of 18. So we're going to go over talking about filling out the DHA form <clears throat> 207. But before I do, as with any DOD, there are five statements they want me to read to make sure that if I didn't cover it in the brief, you have heard it out loud. So I'm going to go over those real quick, and then we will talk about the DHA form 207. So coronavirus disease 2019, or COVID-19, is a respiratory illness that is easily spread from person to person and can be deadly. It has caused a worldwide pandemic and a public health emergency in the US military and throughout the United States. Based on the public health emergency, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has issued an emergency use authorization for a newly developed vaccine to prevent COVID-19 in people 16 years of age and older. You are being brief, offered that vaccine. The top officers and enlisted leaders of all the armed forces and the top military doctors all agree with the recommendation of the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention that eligible people get vaccinated now. Although it is recommended, receipt of the vaccine is voluntary for all Americans, including members of the armed forces. Please fill out the attached voluntary DH or 207 COVID-19 vaccine screening and immunization documentation form and read the attached fact sheet with important additional information. Okay, so before we get into that, um, I wanna make sure there's a couple of things. One, that 207, when we're done with it, regardless of what your decision is, that needs to get handed in before you leave. Number two is if you do get the vaccine, you need to make sure you get one of these cards. This is your, you might've heard about the vaccination card. This is it. It's just gonna be your record of the fact that you got the dose, what the lot number was, and it'll tell you when your next dose is required. So the other thing is Colonel Orr came in and he brought up a really good point, which is He's not trying to censor your social media, but he just asked that we be cognizant of what it is we're posting when we talk about this vaccine and just be safe and make sure you're protecting yourself and others and think about what you're saying when you go on social media. That's all. 